Hello there. Say, if I was to mention caveman, what would you think of? You'd probably picture a man in an animal skin carrying a club. And maybe he needs a shave and a haircut, right? Did you know that the people of Israel lived in caves at one time in their history? Yes, sir, that's right. Some of them did. They lived in caves because they were afraid. They were scared to death of the Midianites, a very cruel and a very mean people. Let's go back to that time and see how a boy who lived in a cave grew up and found a way to become a great leader of his people. There was a family who lived near the little town of Ophrah. It was a very poor and humble family. In the evening, when all the work was done, Joash, the father, would gather everyone around him and tell the old stories. Telling tales of the old days probably helped him forget his troubles. And then the Lord told Moses to point his hand toward heaven. And all at once, a terrible hailstorm began. Egypt had never seen such a storm. The hail crashed down, killing animal and man alike. It broke the bushes and the trees. But in the place where the people of Israel lived, there was no storm at all. Oh, how the family loved to hear those stories. The youngest son of Joash, Gideon, he'd sit listening quietly, leaning against the wall. Although Gideon was just a boy, he wasn't too small to understand the meaning of the stories that his father would tell. Oh, he didn't say much, but he thought a lot. Whenever Joash would end the day with a story, it had been a good day. But some days it just wasn't time for stories. Some days, there were the Midianites. Why, just last week, the Midianites rode through the fields, stealing and destroying the crops of the farmers. A few days later, they stole sheep from the stalls and barns of others. Think of it, hundreds of sheep, gone, just like that. Why, families ended up with nothing. About the only thing they had was just themselves. And that's the way it went for many, many years. The tribes of the desert would raid and steal and burn and kill. And finally, when Gideon was a young man, his father decided it was time to move. Gideon, my son, tell your mother and brothers that I've found a place to live where we'll be safe from harm. I, I know it's best, father, but I hate to leave. I... I was born here. I, I grew up in this house. It's the only home I know. And it'll be the house you're dying if you stand there talking. Now move. Do as I say, quickly. So move they did, away from their home and all the wasted, barren land around it. Everybody in the whole village headed for the mountains to live in caves. It was then that Gideon began to notice a great change come over his father. Why, one day, Gideon found him in his field, and he was building something. Father? Father? Yes, yes, what is it? I was sent to tell you to come in and wash. It's nearly time to eat. Tell your mother I'm busy. Eat without me. I want to get this done before dark. What is it you're building here in the middle of this field of grain? Something to scare away the birds? <laughs> Ignorant boy, can't you see it's an altar? And beside it, I will plant this great wooden stake in the ground. Why? A symbol of the power of nature. Father, do you know what you're saying? I do. The wooden stake represents the Lord of this piece of land. And I will make offerings to it on this altar so that our crops will flourish. But, Father... Silence. Look about us. See the other altars in the fields of our neighbors? We're through waiting for miracles. We will make our own miracles with help from a God we can see and touch right here on our own piece of land.
and Gideon turned and headed for the mountain cave home where his family lived. He just couldn't believe it. His own father, he was beginning to worship the false god, Baal. Father can't think this will help. Does, does he honestly believe there's a spirit ruling only over our little piece of land, making sure the grain will grow? Does he believe this, this spirit will be given power or made happy by giving sacrifices on his homemade altar? No. Oh, it's God himself who cares for us and the land we cultivate. Not, not a, a stick in the ground. A stick is just a stick. A stupid, dumb piece of wood. But in spite of his father's lack of faith, Gideon's own faith never left him. God was still first in Gideon's heart. And then, one day, things began to happen. Yes, one day, Gideon was hiding down inside an old wine press trough where they used to squeeze grapes for the juice. He just harvested the grain from his father's field and was separating the grain from the chaff. He was working in the old trough where he was hidden from any prying eyes of the Midianites who'd come and steal it. Suddenly, Gideon saw him. A strange man sitting under a big oak tree not more than a stone's throw from where Gideon had been working. How long had he been there? Where'd he come from? Who was he and what did he want? And then the man looked at Gideon and spoke. The Lord is with you, mighty soldier. Why, Gideon was so surprised he couldn't speak for a minute. And finally, he pulled himself up out of the old trough where he'd been working and walked over to where the man was sitting. Stranger, if what you say is true, really true, if the Lord is with us, then why have all these terrible things happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors have told us about, such as when God brought them out of Egypt? Now the Lord has thrown us away and has let the Midianites completely ruin us. You, Gideon, will free your people. You will deliver Israel from the hands of the Midianites. I? I deliver Israel? How? My family is poor and weak, and, and I am the least of all of them. I will be with you. You shall destroy the Midianites as if they were one man. You will be with me? You speak as if you were God himself. Oh, but wait. If you are who you say you are, prove it. Prove by a miracle that you are Jehovah. First, I will find you a present. Stay here till I come back. So Gideon, not knowing quite what to believe, went back to the cave where he lived, roasted a young goat and baked some unleavened bread from a bushel of flour. And then he carried the meat in a basket, the broth in a pot, and the bread back to the stranger by the oak tree. Here, I have brought you my gift. I see. Place the meat and bread on that rock over there. Then pour the broth over it. When Gideon had done as he was told, the stranger touched the meat and bread with his staff. And when he did, fire flamed up from the rock and the food vanished. Why, that fire was so bright that Gideon had to close his eyes. And when he opened them again, he found that the stranger, too, had disappeared. Then it was that Gideon knew he had seen an angel of the Lord. And Gideon built an altar right there on the spot and called it the altar of peace. <laughs>